o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable, and I have all these great DJs here. So if you do me a favor very quickly, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll be greatly appreciated. Uh, you want to follow these guys also for content, too. All the links are down below. And make sure that you uh, do show some love to them and go on their channels, watch their gig logs, uh, and watch their social media. They have tons of social media everywhere. Uh, DJ Brentley brought dinner tonight from his normal uh, car show. <laughs> there you go, Rudy's. And he has his assistant behind him, who's probably doing homework, probably, hopefully. There she no. is. No, no homework tonight? Okay. I don't have homework. No homework tonight? Well, how about this? Read a book. I My do parents? that every night before bed. Yep. Good. Good for you, girl. Good for you. Good for you. As always, good. And we happen to have a teacher here. Mr. Dwayne Dixon, now, what, what, sorry, on my screen, it's different. So <laughs> Mr. Dwayne Dixon is a teacher. We have a lot of great people here who are great DJs and music connoisseurs. Um, question for tonight, which I'm going to start off with. Hey, what's going on, Mikey Mike, DJ Mikey Mike from, uh, from wonderful Pennsylvania. And Jeff is in the chat as well, so you can say hello to everyone. And I want to ask you guys, I'm going to start with Jeff on this one. Um, we were talking a little bit lighting before we came in here. And do you think, this is a question for you guys as a group, do you think that if you're doing a large room, if you're doing a large room or even a smaller room, do you think moving heads or do you think more stationary lighting, more wash lighting for a room? So what I mean by that, when you do a gig, uh, I know you guys all have gig places you go to, and we all have different lighting. Do you try to say, hey, is moving heads better than this place? Or is it better to do a wash light in this place? Or is it better to do a Kinta? Or is it better to do a um, you know, FS Swarm? You know, the FX Swarm, I have two of those. Uh, what do you feel is your best light? Or do you try to customize it for the location? And try to talk customers into lighting. So, Jeff, I'm going to start with you because you do a lot of different events, especially some school events and so forth, um, and as well as weddings. So, what do you feel? What do you usually go for lighting? Uh, it depends on the venue and the people. Um, if it's a wedding, I try not to use anything with like little dots or spots or lasers. Um, you know, don't want to uh, mess the dress up for the photographer that they're paying a lot of money to uh, to hire to be there to take pictures. It's a big room. Uh, I usually like to have some kind of moving heads. I got uh, expensive moving heads and cheap moving heads. And depending on, you know, the budget of the uh, the venue or the, the people that are hiring me, I will bring one of those. Um, uh, you know, just got two Chinese moving heads. They're, they're pretty inexpensive. And I got two of the uh, Chauve Intimidator Spot 360s that are big and heavy, but they put put out a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, light. So I'll use those, and and if it's bigger the room, you know you can't you can't have too much lighting. I'll usually throw some washes on top of my uh, tops uh, if I'm taking my uh, uh, my Mackies, and then I'll throw the uh, moving heads on top of the glow totems, and then I'll uplight the heck out of it. So yeah, if it's a smaller venue, um, smaller wedding, I'll just do uplighting, you know, and just um, uh, just keep it simple. Okay. So, DJ Brownlee, I know you also, excuse me, congratulations on getting some new RCF speakers. Welcome Thank to the you. RCF world. I know the LD system speakers are also really good, too. You love. Oh, um, I love those things. You should love the RCFs as well. Uh, I'm more of the line array guy, just like Jeff is. Jeff has his LD system line arrays. We we love those line arrays. Uh, they have great stuff. But the other regular speakers are also top-notch as well. And... Matt, DJ Salsas also runs RCF. He runs, you know, subs as well as the big boy our, uh, line arrays. Um, so I know you got that. But for lighting, because we're going back to the subject, uh, I know you there's a few venues you go to quite a bit. And I notice you have up lights that do three beams. It's one to the straight up and one left to right, like a 45-degree angle each side. Yeah. Do you use that all the time, or do you kind of only use it for certain venues? Or are there certain, certain venues you do different lighting than others, or what do you do for lighting? 
It definitely one depends on the my uh, couple and what they want out of me. But moreover, like I definitely plan my lighting and my setup based on the room I'm going to. So at celebrations on the river, for example, they have uh, the head table in every location up and on a wall with a wall to its back. And usually it's a flat wall where I can project those two neatly. Um, a venue like the Cargill Room where they don't have any open flat walls I can really utilize for those to go anywhere. That's when I'll use this basic, you know, my uh, top lighting up lights that I've been using for a, like a year and a half now. And if I get a room that has like, you know, the dance floor, you know, preset where they're not flipping the room, and I've got plenty of room to project, you know, on walls around the dance floor, I'll run my Rockvilles that I have slaved to DMX for record box. So I can have those based on what I'm doing and, you know, in that room. But more often than not, when it comes to my dance floor lighting, a lot of the couples up here have more often than not asked me for no lasers and no strobes. So that's when I started using, you know, the eight par 56 I've been using on two trees. And those seem to be, I, I can make them strobe if I want to through record box based on the settings I'm using. But more often than not, they make great washes depending on the scene that, you know, is go running in record box. I do have my one, my uh, show bay movers. And yeah, if I'm in one room at celebrations, I will definitely bring them out because I need to cover a little bit more space. And it's, you know, the flattened space, not the depth of it, but more to show there's something all over the dance floor. So then I'll bring them, I'll bring my movers out. And depending what's going on, like from the Cargill room here in the cross, I may, uh, because the lighting doesn't, you know, unless you shut off the lighting, it never actually gets super dim in there. So I may only bring um, my two movers and have up lights around the dance floor. But I definitely try to keep it tasteful and classy to what's, or based on what is uh, the venue I'm at and what we have for the day, if that makes sense. I've actually recently been looking at my Kintas again and a few other things I've had in my garage and storage for a couple of years. I'm actually thinking about putting them back into my setup because of how you can adjust their settings in record box. So you'll never have like, the red, green, and blue spot, you'll either have red or green or X, Y, and Z washing it. So I'm probably next week going to sit and redo my lights a little bit just to add more to it. And if I don't like them in record box, I can just turn them off in the show I'm using. So I can literally have my shows all pre-programmed and just go to a show without the lights I don't want in. Okay, and that, that's that's an important question is that you work with your clients. Do you like Jeff said he works with his clients and works for the room and stuff like that and talks to them about stuff? And that's the intelligent thing. I'm going to go to one of the best guys here for lighting, uh, which he even has lighting behind him, and that is Matt, DJ Salsa is out there in California. Matt, I know that you do a lot of lighting, especially a lot of DMX. You have your software that you love. You have things all down pat on it. But when you set up stuff for lighting for each individual uh, event, and I know talking to you many times, and you said it here on the show plenty of times, you like doing things a little bit different each time because of the fact that you want to customize for a room. If you keep going back to the same room, do you still keep the same system or do you change or do you change based upon the client's needs and wants? Or do you say, hey, you know what? We're going to do something different this time. It's a big room, we're going to do moving heads, or it's a small room, we're going to do this. What do you usually do? It, it kind of depends. Um, I mean, I if they're getting my bigger package, it's a bigger lighting setup, and we really only have a couple ways to kind of set it up with the trusses. But um, like my normal lighting setup with those gravity or the flex stands, uh, I could put them pretty much every, anywhere. And since the lights are battery powered, I could you know, throw those wherever the dance floor is or hide them behind some trees or planters or whatever. Um, so I always kind of scope out the venue on Google ahead of time. I don't do site visits. I don't get paid enough for that. And I don't feel like I, it's really necessary, but, um, if it's kind of a complex layout or situation then I might, but I always arrive early enough to kind of adapt and figure it out and, um, put the lights however best I think they should go. I always have like multiple different clamps and adapters and, 
brackets and things that I can use uh, in my arsenal with me at all times. So, um, yeah, I just I, I hate bringing those flex stands. They're so heavy. Uh, those base plates are so heavy and they're just it's not so much the weight. It's just that each one's in its own bag. So that's one, two plus three, four for the poles that you have to take out of your car, put on the cart, put on top of your speakers or sub or whatever, and then set them down on the ground, screw it in. It's just a process. Whereas like a speaker stand, you just throw it in a bag, take it out, pop it up, done. So um, I, but I, I do like how you're able to pretty much do anything with those things. So well, yeah, yeah the, the, the gravity stands that you have, that the single pole gravity stands and stuff like that you have, they do have a unique look. Um, but again, that 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 play, that play in the bottom, that's one of the things a lot yeah. of people don't really think about. So it's usually a good size play because you have something heavier on top, and you don't want it mm -hmm. falling over, hurting no one. <laughs> right? They that's are. The they are. Want. They're way more rock solid than gravity stands. Hundred percent. They they do not move when they're on the ground. Gravity stands, they sway back and forth under a lot of weight. They just it's a thinner pull. So the the flex stands are much stronger and the base plate is a, adjustable. So you can kind of level out the feet if you're on an uneven surface, which is always comes in clutch. Um, but the pole itself, if you're unfortunate like me, they don't calculate the threading. So it's supposed to front and back line up perfectly where the adjustment is so that it comes out the front or the back. One of mine does. The other one is like off by maybe, I don't know, 30 degrees. So I'm going to buy an extra one at Amazon and just do the whole, uh, you know, swap the defective one process. Uh, yeah, point, it, it sounds also, like there's something wrong with that one. And if it's not 100% yeah. right, you know, it, but, it throws a light off. That's not fun. But yeah, I, I, I like to kind of adapt the, the lighting setup to the venue. So it's always different. Um, I have like an idea in mind usually of how I want to set it up. But a lot of times I'll get there and kind of, you know, it's, it's different every time. That's why I think my gig logs are fun to watch because... I'm not like DJ Bar and do the exact same two or four totems, TVs or no TVs, moving heads or no moving heads. It's like it's the same exact setup every single time. And a lot of DJs on YouTube do that same exact setup every single time. And it's boring. Like if, if a venue venue has beams in the ceiling, like I'm going to try to mount lights to those beams if, if it's not too high or too crazy. Uh, just because I like creating a really cool club like atmosphere where the lighting is shining down from above and just looks badass i don't know no i i totally understand that and you know just like you know we all try to work really hard uh one really quick question for dj uh brentley uh do you get your three and one ready my uh, what your three and one you got one ready your three and one drink oh no i don't have one right now sorry oh <laughs> Man, you always have your energy drink. You 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 like live by the energy drink. I'm drink. I'm just thinking you drink doc, you know, a diet coke. I'm like, what? No, 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 no energy drink tonight. It's Tuesday. It's a school night for Mira. I got to be up in the morning, so I can't push staying up late. Oh, okay. Yeah, nope. Diet coke. You drink your white claw. And I got the other night. I'm not having a white claw right now. No, white, white claws are to put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm gonna need, need one today. I'm, but... I'm drinking a line and Klugel for you here. So there you go. Is it a summer shanty, sir? It is. There you go. Those the people in Wisconsin, it such as uh, DJ Bradley, appreciates you buying a nice Wisconsin based beer. Thanks, and there you go. Look at that. Uh, so Dwayne, I know that also you set stuff up for events, and you, you just. Actually, you were just doing a live on YouTube. I, I was watching you for a while uh, on YouTube. Um, nice mix, sir. I was w listening to your mix for a little bit uh, when I had some time and was watching. And I try to uh, watch everyone here. So, again, if you're watching this, go down below, go to their channels, follow their channels uh, on YouTube, and uh, click on the links there. It goes to their channels. But uh, I saw that you know you had some lighting, you had your speakers up and stuff like that. When you do stuff like that, do you do custom lighting for the event? Do you tell, tell people, hey, you know, this package comes with this, but this room needs that, or this room is massive and it needs extra stuff? What do you usually do for your clients? Yeah, I usually don't go into too much in depth with the lights. Uh, I usually, most of my clients just want <laughs> um, dance floor lights. 
So um, I just bring for weddings. I've been using the wash effects, so it's not like right, a bunch right. of dots, but it can I can use it to wash the room or use it in dance mode where they can just you know change colors to the music. But like at my school, I'll use like my um moving heads or my gig bar, and then if I want to highlight a, a wall, I use up lights or the slim thing. So my I usually really don't get into too in depth with the lights, and I just might DMX it with my um sound switch to the music. Okay. But video from Saturday, that um venue had their own lights because they do karaoke. So basically, I just set up, played the music, and he turned on the lights, and then he has the lights going down on the dance floor and behind and the curtains. Well, I did notice people dancing. I was watching, you know, your, I was listening to music or playing. I'm like, oh, this is some good stuff. You actually had Tracy dancing a little bit too. She's like, oh, I know this. I know this. You know, I we're hearing stuff. She's like, oh, yeah, I can. She was already just tapping a little bit to it. So, and I thought, I thought about y'all Saturday too, because yeah, everybody keeps hey, saying I, line dancing. And if you saw in the video, at one point, because they requested line dance, so I played my line dances. But I was like, now nah, are you all the you know, the Cupid Shuffle group, they only know four line dances or or can I go way back and do like the Porculator and don't y'all have, then y'all like create like the line dance kind of like way like with this, they call it Chicago two-step or something. Not that I can remember off the top of my head, but you know, like, well, like Cha Cha Slide, that is, that's a Chicago-based song. Cupid, uh, you know, he, I guess, I, I, you know, Cupid Shuffle, Wobble, uh, you know, Cha-Cha Slide, the Electric Slide, those are more, like, you know, like mainstream ones. Think of people once in a while want to do, you know, like Macarena or they want to do YMCA or stuff like that. So it's nice to use those older ones like that, like Macarena, YMCA. There's a few other ones to do, too. Um, you know, get yeah, because I was thinking like like the JB Monorail, Detroit Hustle. Oh um, yeah, you're going back to like disco era. Yeah, yeah. You're, going, you're you're going back then. You know, that's that's that, that that's always fun. The hustle is always fun. You know, kind of get that yeah. uh, kind of soul train kind of feel to it. If you get one right. lined up person, they did a couple dance down the center. Yeah, that's that's yeah, always so cool I'm, to do. Yeah, and I'm also doing like our um open house, and they asked for line dancing. So I was just thinking, like everybody was saying. No line dances, yuck yuck. I'm like, that's all they've been asking me for. <laughs> and I, I, I want to get to the uh, chat here for a little bit, and um, let's see here. Uh, it would be, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Mikey Mike says I would load in with wash lights and lasers all over, uh, kind of like Matt. <laughs> and then. Uh, his first question is to couples and our first meeting uh, is, does any of the guests or family members have any medical conditions that strobe lights will affect them? Very important thing to ask uh, because most clients want a club style atmosphere, but once they think about what I ask them, they usually want the wash lighting. So yeah, that is, that is a crucial thing. You, you kind of want to ask uh, for strobing. If I know people don't you can't use strobe, I don't turn the strobe part on. I, I you know, turn it off uh, with lighting, and that's that's the important thing is trying to find that out. Because as a professional, we don't want people to fall down, um, not feeling one hundred percent, or getting ill because of strobe lights or having some kind of complications. Um, we want the look of it. We want most people to enjoy themselves, but we also don't want people to you know have any kind of problems or anything like that. So uh, continuing on the lighting um, talk. I know that uh, Dwayne, you said sound switch, and DJ Brentley uses a uh, um, record box and it has its own like sound switch like software built into it. Um, and I use a stairs for certain events uh, for certain packages, and it has built in um, basically programs in the app. And I also have uh, Shave Show Express to do true, uh, true DMX. But I'm seeing more and more and more of these new. AIs, I'm going to use a quotation mark here, AI um, systems to actually listen to the music and do intelligent lighting. There's one on Facebook that keeps popping up for me um, for lighting. And there's a few other ones that I see uh, quite a bit. And it's um, 
it's very interesting about that. Uh, That's um, basically what record box lighting does. You literally, it takes your song, analyzes it, and maps the show to that song. So yeah, it's, it's doing it in the software, but these yeah. are separate standalone units. Um, uh, Mastro DMX is one. Uh, that right there, it's like I think like seven hundred dollars for the unit. Uh, Travis um, in Kentucky. Hey, Adrian. He got a hold of one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's an AI software that does the uh, lighting. And yeah, he uses he, now he uses that uh, one AI unit. Uh, Travis uses uh, Mike saying that. Um, and again, Brentley, you use it, and Dwayne uses uh, it. Uh, the AI system, Jeff, do you use it like an AI system, or do you do it yourself? No, I, I DMX all mine is through uh, Airstream DMX. Okay. And then I know yeah. I, I know Matt uses software, so um, yeah, it's a thousand bucks for the one that Mac and that Travis uses. Yeah, I know it's expensive. I'm sure it's going to come down price once they get rolling more and more in the market. Uh, Cause this one from uh Mastro DMX, that's I think seven fifty, and they got a discount at 25% if you order right now. So they yeah. have a discount on it ready. Um, so would you guys like Jeff, would you or Matt, would you or again Brentley, you already have it, but would you switch? Or Dwayne switch to a AI operated DMX system for your lights. Never. There is no way that those AI systems will ever come close to what um, manual control will do. Uh, I've seen the videos of both. I think <laughs> they look terrible. Um, they do. They they basically look like somebody made an auto program and it's just running through it. They don't actually go to the beat very well. Um, and if they do, it's it's not like the that's the thing is like it, you have to have manual control for lighting it's just that's it is what it is like no lighting system is going to read your wavelength or whatever sine wave whatever you want to call it and make it look like the same it it'll look okay it won't look the same as what a show that like somebody with an actual console pressing buttons will do um but it can look i mean they they look all right in like a progression like I, I don't know i it's i've only also only seen as many videos as travis and this other guy have put out that are like the beta tester guys for it and the videos that the company's put out and to me i just uh, i i don't know it doesn't well, it doesn't seem one, like the one thing is that they, I, and then the reason i use air quotes and i use quotation for ai it's not true ai it's an algorithm it's not an actual thinking huh. ai means you know, it's an intelligent item. It is a thinking item like a human brain. These are softwares that have algorithms and they read certain things and they see certain things like Rekordbox does and analyzes stuff and does what it, it it's programmed to do. Instead of saying it thinks what it needs to do, it's better for this or that. Um, and then, Brantley, again, I know you use the Rekordbox one. How do you feel uh, how good it is? You know, now that I've really had a couple of years using it, I'm pretty impressed with how it works, at least from what I need it to do. And it's it also how it's set up. It gives you the ability to change speeds, change uh, C. It has three speeds it runs on, uh, high or, or three settings, high, medium, low. Then it has seven more presets that say, like, Cool, hot, warm, vivid, natural, club one and club two, I think they are. And then you can switch. Then you have another toggle that you can switch to all of one color. So any of the colors that are pre-programmed into the lighting fixtures, you can click that and it'll go to all those colors. And then if I want to have a strobe game on it, I can make all my lights strobe or single out one light in my preset uh, scenes to strobe out and they just discontinued the record box rb dmx1 and when they've been doing so in recent years with dex i'm assuming they're coming out with the next upgrade to it which i would think at this point has you know 
similar to like the SP2 that you can use with uh, CDJs and uh, uh, DJM uh, 900. They have the SP2, which has you can use as a sampler, hot cues, and all that. I wouldn't be surprised if they were to come out with a box that lets you toggle each individual aspect of it. So a twist knob like they do for uh, effects on like an RZ, for example, and then the button you push to activate each light cut sensor, which I would hope, considering that's one of the things that they have been pushing and upgrading in all of their sales points is their lighting system. And having a, you know, like a hand, act, you know, usable tablet of some kind would be the next evolution in it. It would be so nice. But switching to an AI something, I don't think I'd be keen on because I don't have control of everything. And not being you know, a control freak, but if I need my lights to start, you know, go from this scene, that's kind of, you know, the slow, like, EDM, you know, breakdown. When you just have the first initial vocal drop until you have the build up and, you know, into the song where you can change each one of those and make them go and do what you want. I don't see AI really doing it the way I would want to see it. Maybe my, I'm completely wrong. My thing also is like, if you think of like an EDM song and you have, hold on, let me hop up. And you have like build up, build up, build up, build up, one, two, three, drop. You want that build up to strobe slow a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, blackout, and then at the one, two, three, do a chase scene, like up and down with your LED bars, and then all yeah. out strobing. And you just can't do that with these AIs. They just don't understand structure of songs like that. Uh, maybe they will in the future, but it's it's got to be one of those things where, like, you have to let it train itself to each song. And, like, it's it's kind of reminds me of stems where you have to, like, you know, analog pre-analyze everything before you can fully unleash it and if you're adding music constantly like it just i don't know i think it maybe in a couple years they'll be at the point because there is software called disco i think megalite i think makes it and after you put all your fixtures in you press a button and it quantizes and creates hundreds of scenes that are like pre-programmed based off the fixtures using ai and they've had that for a couple years and i've seen it it's pretty magical but right. we'll see you know, and the best thing I, I I think I'm gonna try and reach out to uh someone, maybe I uh, asked uh uh Travis, maybe they asked him to come on the show and have him because he has experience with this. He has videos out there, but he understands the more nuances. And I'm seeing more and more of these manufacturers come out with it. And you know, you have sound switch, which uh, Dwayne has, which we're gonna talk to in a second. And I know sound switch has that unit with it has a little L C D screen in there. You can actually program the lights in their 3D LCD. Uh, it works very, very well. If I remember correctly, with Serato, they have a special in you know special pack with Serato, and they know how Serato works. And I think it works with Virtual DJ too. Uh, Mike was saying Sound Switch goes through VDJ and other soft the other software program, which is Serato. Um, uh, and, and Jeff asks, is there another? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, again, there's some people who are surrounded, some people are virtual DJ, and uh, there's a few other companies. So some people are using Tractor. And you got, you know, Matt, he has his old software that he loves because everything mapped. So there's there's more than one uh, way to skin a cat. I, uh, my opinion I on do. lighting is eye candy. Some clients want semi-sweet, others want sweet, and a few want super sweet. But as we DJs have to st uh, steer them straight, so it's not overly uh, bearing, which is true. You don't want overbearing lights. You don't want blind people. You don't want bl don't blind grandma. Don't make grandma deaf. With that said, Dwayne, since you have Sound Switch and you work with uh, Serato, and they work hand in hand with each other, they have a very close uh, relationship with each other. Um, what has been your experience with Serato and with lighting? How do you like it? Do you feel it's more you think it's more AI based or you think it's more just more algorithm based or how do you feel how it works? Um, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's AI based because we, it's like two separate programs and you have to make sure that, um, you open Serato up, but then you have to go up and open up, um, sound switch. Cause they don't work, you know, like right together. They work separately. And then you have to go and make sure you pre-analyze your tracks before the event. And then it's like a lot of prep that you have to do before the event. If you don't do it, it may not work right. Okay. But the, my, 
my best experience came once I got the, the, the control. Then I was able to do things on the fly and do things when I wanted, as opposed to analyzing the song. It may not be right on the beat, but with the control box, you can do that. And then you also can pre-control it, like what Matt was saying, do chases and save it. And that comes in handy when you switch the um the manual control and you can hit a button and different lights will do different things at, at a time. So uh, yeah, this it's somewhat will automate your stuff, but it's, I wouldn't say it's AI. Okay. Now here, here's a question for both you and DJ Brantley is on the software. I know with record box and with, because you have sound switch, um, you go in, analyze your whole entire library and every single song you get and let analyze everything and then have it decide for the songs for the lights or do you, you have to uh, basically analyze as you go. So you bring songs into your uh, player and sound switch or uh, record box in the background is then analyzing that particular song and setting it up for that time. No, once you, it's it like, it puts it somewhere. Just like when you tag your music, you have all the different, um, like you have your title, artist, album, beats per minute. You know, like you put your tags and it's saving some kind of file. And once you do that, it's, it stays with that file. Okay. So if I was to take that song and put it on an external drive and take it somewhere else, that imprint, that sound switch imprint would stay with that file. So you, that's why I'm saying you have to do it beforehand. You can't, it's not one of those things like with the stems where you can hit stems and it's automatically hit it and it cuts it off right, right at that point. Yeah. You have to pre, uh, you know, prep for it. So you, you scan and, you know, it's like anything else. Like I you take, you know, every so often, well, I, I do it quite a bit, but go into virtual DJ, scan all the new music I get from promo only from extended mix and so forth, so on scan all the stuff every, you know, whenever I can get a chance to let it run through and scan every song. So it gets the BPM. So it gets the title. So it gets everything and knows it's on my hard drive. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I think that right there is kind of the same thing you're saying you do at stems. Is that the same thing you run with, uh, with, um, record boxer uh, Bradley? is it, you go through and just scan the whole entire library and let it work out what the lighting is supposed to be. Basically. I mean, it, it's once you you know load import your songs into record box like Dwayne was saying it you know it marks all your tags you know gives you bpm key or everything that you want date you know down to like date added what kind of file it is all of that now in my in my dj view i will strip a lot of that away just so i can see like song preview and all that but i'm not looking for you know uh what do you call it looking for like keys uh, what kind of file it is, if it's synced to the cloud or anything. So I can open it and get some more view space out of that. But in that same stroke, when you're importing music, Recordbox Analyze, you, I set mine up so the second I import music, it's automatically analyzing. And I won't shut the computer down. I will let it do all of its analyzing until and wait till it's all done. And then I'll go through and you know make sure everything came through correctly. At that point, I know I've got my light show is already programmed to the song or basically programmed to the song. Um, Cause it's got, it go, it's based on phrase of the song, you know, intro, vocal, chorus, pre-chorus and all that. And it maps that out in the lighting track, so to speak. And you'll see that underneath the main preview waveform on your player. So you can see what point of the song it's in. And if you don't like where it's at in the lighting show, you can right click and change that scene in that song and save it. So there are, you know, it is changeable, but I I can even, you know, import a song on the fly. I just can't play it right away. I have to wait for, like, you know, drag it into my library, wait for it to import and, you know, analyze, and then I can go right out the gate and start using it on uh, in record box lighting mode. It just needs to import. So that's a big advantage for what I've, I've heard, and part of the reason why I've never made the jump to Serato because you have a couple extra steps for your lighting mode that record box eliminates. That's why I'm like, like sounds, which I'm hoping they have a controller for lighting this year or early next year. 
Okay. Yeah, because Sound Switch, I thought Sound Switch has the Control One. Is that what you're talking about, or something different? I I'm not sure what it is, but I know my friend has a pad, like a a control pad to it. Yeah, it's black. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, and that's what I'm hoping Rockerbox comes up with for there is something similar, because everything you and let, being a Mac user, you don't. I don't have you know a touch screen like some PC users do, so I can't click on my screen to hit the lighting. So I'm mousing it all. It would be so easy to have it right at my fingertips. I've heard you can't. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. A Mac computer not able to do something? <laughs> Unheard I gotta of. Do for, I got to do it for. I got to do that for for Matt. All right, Matt. Have a good night. Enjoy your dinner, sir. All right, I'll catch you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I, I got to do that for Matt because Matt and I always see each other. Well, see, he sees he sees can do stuff Max can't, but no phone can do things that an iPhone can. Like iPhones. <laughs> Phone wise, Mac has that down. No phone can compete with an iPhone. Computers, I know PCs are way clocked in faster than Macs, so I, I'm not trying to fight that battle. You'll yeah. you can win that one. <laughs> I'll All see right, you later, Matt. You, you enjoy yourself. See you Bye. next week, brother. <laughs> I yeah, with tease them every so often, but it, it's it's interesting because it's uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with lighting, especially with the software, with Recordbox, with Sound Switch, and then. Jeff and myself, we're you know using the older software, and he has the on the he has right there all the lights programmed on his. Yeah, these tablet. are all presets. These are all my presets. Oop, I just went down one. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry. These are all my uh, shows that are um, that uh, I have programmed, and um, so there's 24 on this page and there's three pages of that. I don't use the page two and three very much, but these are all pre-programmed for, you know, whatever I need. And, you know, some of them are just, um, they're just up lights, you know, different colors. Some are sound active for everything. Others are slow mode, strobe, white, all uh, movers making a star in the center for, um, you know, a couple. So, and that can be easily manipulated and, and programmed before every event. So it works. This is just a um, you know simple iPad, but that's a Airstream DMX, and it works for me. Um, but you know, at some point, yeah. But the only problem with this is when I'm DJing and I'm by myself, you know, and I'm sure everybody's been there. But um, I uh, sometimes will forget to change the lighting if I'm concentrating on something else, you know. And uh, and I look up and it's like a slow dance, and I've got strobes going. One, or not strokes but you know fast movers going i'm like shit you know i gotta i gotta change i forgot to change that or, or vice versa you know i've got uh slow moving blue you know just going across the, the 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 entire dance floor and you know i'm playing september you know so um so so those things that i would look forward to in an ai program that would automatically do that for me uh, and I know Sound Switch can do that to some degree, but I do like having the control. Uh, just got to force myself to pay attention more so I actually make the, the push buttons when I need to push them. And see, that's a huge advantage to record box lighting because when the song is playing, it is going to the song. And if I get to a, you know, if it gets to an amped up part, the lights will change based on the tempo and what's going on in the song. Which, yeah, I, I know I'm I'm terrible about doing lights, especially in the clubs I'm at where they give me a lighting pad. It's like, okay, and I, I actually have to make notes on my hand, lights. And so after I'll change the song, you know, make one transition, I'll hit the light bar a couple times, get my next song, hit the light. And, but with Rockerbox, it takes all that out of it. The only thing you really have to do is if you want to, you know, make the scene a little bit faster, a little bit hotter, or if you want to, you know, because it has, you know, high, you know, low, medium, and high, you can control all of that, and it just controls the light speed. And so if I forget and I'm playing a banger that's going real fast, it will be pick up on that and adjust accordingly based on the low setting or the medium or the high. But, yeah, it's very intuitive, and I, I mean, it just makes my life kind of like Rachel uh, Lynch, who's like, yeah, she uses a sound-activated program on all of her uh, ape lab stuff. That's the simple. That's how simple using record box lighting is. Once you literally just enter your fixture into it, that's it. You're done and off to the races. It's just so convenient. 
And you know, with songs, it, with songs, I was gonna say songs switch. You can almost do that too, because it has a it has tons of presets where you can have it set for hip hop, R and B, chill. And if you really want to get into it, you can for each song you can go in there and change it to automatically jump. Like when you get to that hype section, do like strobes or different lighting effects. And once you save it, it's always with that song, and they'll always yep. continue to do the same thing. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of the things that I, I kind of feel the pain of, Je of Jeff because I, I have pulled up my Astera. And then one thing with Astera, I don't know if, uh, if on ADJ and their software, but on Astera, the, the actual, in, in each individual fixture talks to the network. It's a two-way system. So the air bridge that they have, that Astera has, I can see when I go in there, I can't do it right now because I don't have an air bridge on. I don't have any lights on. Uh, I can see the battery percentage of the light. I can see what it's doing. I can say, I want this light on, but not that light on. I could do certain things within the network to give it very, very customized uh, with it. But this is this is the Astera. This is just you know part of, one of their part of their app. And you have multiple pages. And... You know, I can go in and pick different things. Like one of the things Option has is paparazzi. It looks like, you got to remember, Astera was originally designed, um, how he uses ADJ. Um, he uses what uh, Jeff uses. Astera uh, is originally designed for um, for lighting for movies and TV. That's where originally it came from. Um, and they originally, they, when they started making the lights back in the 90s, it was originally to light up fire scenes and to cut through the fog and smoke of fires. So the lighting has come from that to going into TVs and movies because how they light now into the DJ world because of what they do. And you have different uh, options like you have EU police, police, all these different options you have for lights. Uh, you have one called television. If I had one of these on in front of me, it looks like I'm watching a TV and have movement on a TV but it's just the way the lighting works. So, but like a couple of times I use uh, what's called fire. So the stick actually glowing red and you have like one of those, you're like filming someone from the face or from behind. It looks like there's a fire going on in front of them. I've done that for a dance floor for slow dances, ice. I've done that for let it go. You know, it has a little white twinkles going through a blue light and stuff like that. Um, and then it has, you know, different kinds of settings. Like one of the ones I use, is actually it's called uh, techno, which has a little lightning bolt head strobe. But a lot of times I'll hit slow strobe or fast strobe. I can kind of customize it, and I can hit sync with the BPM by hitting the sync button because it's actually on the, the the transmitter. It has a microphone and listens to the BPM. So there's some intelligence to this. It seems like the um, Astera is kind of between the ADJ and the uh, software in. Um, in sound switch or in uh record box it's kind of it sounds like kind of like between the two the one thing like you jeff i run into is forgetting to change a thing quite fast enough and then getting into the tablet putting your password in and then <laughs> let it start up and let it get in there and it's got to talk to the network and network's got to talk back and it takes a second or two so you have to be very cognizant okay. of what you're doing trying to get keep on top of that yeah, and, yeah. I um, I keep my tablet, uh, the iPad, just constantly open, and uh, it never never goes to sleep, never uh, goes into uh, uh, power save or anything. I just keep it open the entire time. So it's, uh, it, and I do have an extra plug on my um, system, so I can keep it charged if it starts to, you know, if it's a long gig, four or five hour gig, I can uh, keep it hot. So, well, the nice yeah, thing, you know, for me, I will, I'm not going to probably spend the amount of money that we're talking to upgrade my lighting at this point for AI, uh, due to the fact that I've already got a good amount uh, invested in what I have and what I have works. And I have a lot of time invested in programming the DMX to what I consider to be a, a good show. And it's just, you know, uh, me hitting the buttons. And if I have an assistant, and my son or whatever, um, that, that helps the fact they can, they can either do that or they can DJ. So, but yeah, in a couple of years, it might be worth looking at, uh, when the prices come down. Oh yeah. Cause I, the price right I now, I want to like, be an early adopter. 
<laughs> yeah, like, like I said before, I, I think the uh, Mikey Mike said uh, one that uh, Travis is using at least like a thousand bucks. And this other one from uh, uh, Maestro DMX, um, it's, you know, 750 and they got 25% off. It, it, it's like anything else. You want to invest the money into it. Do you need to invest the money into it? It's still an emerging technology. It's going to take time, just like, like Matt said, it's going to take some time before it does it. But you already have somewhat there with SoundSwitch and with, uh, you know, Rekordbox with what they're doing. And even though, uh, Jeff, you and I are kind of similar on a DMX act aspect of stuff, uh, your wired or wireless DMX, depending on how you stuff, have stuff set up, it's very interesting how it's progressed. Because I don't know if you remember or not, I'm sure you, Jeff, you've been around for a while is the control of the slides and controlling individual slides with DMX. And Dwayne, oh, yeah. I see you nodding your head, and I'm sure Brent Lee's dealt with that, the, the controller at the slides and having buttons with presets and, you know, having that big, huge pad there. Oh, wow, no glasses. Hey, take your glasses off for a second there, dude. Wow. <laughs> I had to run outside to let one of my DJs in the garage. Oh, no problem. Wow, I did like never see you without your glasses on. I know you guys see it, you need them to see. So, <laughs> well, these are my readers. These are only for like reading my computer screen. So well, I ran outside. I had to go put these ones on and then go deal with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want you to yeah. see. We want you stubbing your toe, getting hurt. But uh, I, you know, that's one of the things that uh, it's just you know, it's like when you don't see someone with glasses, they're always wearing glasses. Like, wait a second, that's Superman. <laughs> that's not Clark Kent. That's Superman, <laughs> and he wears a cape, folks. So if you get a chance to watch him as gig logs when he's standing there with his scrim sets, it looks like he's wearing a cape. So I always tease him on that, and it's 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 a it's a loving te tease as like for a brother or another sibling. It's it's awesome always to have. It's all good. Yep, it's always fun stuff. And I I want to ask you guys one last thing before we uh, cut out here tonight. Um, with light going back to lighting, going back to the pricing of equipment, stuff like that. And I know, uh, Jeff, you have a couple of the, uh, the booth lives, uh, up lights that you've gotten, uh, that you enjoy. Uh, Dwayne, I know you got some up lights. I know uh, DJ Brantley's got up lights. We all have up lights and stuff like that. When you go to a gig, and I know you try and figure out what you need before you go there. On average, because again, some of you, some of you guys have, you know, a Tahoe or an SUV, and some like myself have a big van. Like you know, DJ Brentley has a van. Do you keep you try and bring some extra lighting just in case, or do you keep it in the vehicle, or do you say, okay, hey, I always go, I, I always know this this event needs six lights, and that's it. What do you usually do, Jeff? I usually don't bring anything like if I'm not going to use movers, I'm not going to bring movers just in case I'm going to use them because that's a huge difference. That's a big setup. You know, you need totems. If I'm not going to have movers and totems, I'm not going to throw movers in or uh, I'm not going to throw my wash effects in if I'm not bringing my Mackies because that's uh, or, or the totems because that's where they go. They go on top of the Mackies or they go on the totems. So but as far as uplighting goes, yeah, I mean, I've got. Um, Eight of the hour four hex pars, eight of the freedom hex pars, six of the six by 18 watt hex pars, and four of the nine by 18 hex pars. So I got like 26, 28 lights, whatever. And uh, I'm not going to bring all of those, but I will bring at least 16 or 20 uh, for every event. Um, most events I'll use anywhere from eight to 16 up lights, um, depending on how big the facility is. But um, yeah, I, I mean, uplighting is easy as far as these are. They're very small. Um, my six buys and my nine buys, those are pretty big, especially the nine buys. Those are, you know, they're huge. I mean, they're, you know, this big and they weigh five pounds each or seven pounds or whatever. They're the old style. And I probably will sell those eventually um, just because I, I haven't brought them in the past, you know, to like one event in the past year. So, um, but more and more, I'm just not putting those in the vehicle to take. So, yeah, but I, I do. I do take a little extra, but just up lighting. And that's 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 a question. Plus, I, I just put into the chat uh, down there, uh, U-King uh, moving heads. Uh, I have a set. I bought a set of them. Uh, they were a little bit cheaper before. They went up like around $18 since the last time I got them. Um, but they're actually nice little decent 
uh, moving heads. And if you get a chance to at least check them out, and I'll put them down below in the description on YouTube as well. Uh, they are um, they are DMXable. They're uh, are they what? They're five twelve DMX uh, DMXable. I want to. They're eleven channels. I want to say because you have eight gobos, eight colors, and you know the tracking of the, the X and Y of the light itself. But they're a nice little light. U King has some. If you want some cheap moving heads and you know they're they're 25 watts they're not going to like light up the whole entire room uh like the chaves and again i got chaves as well the uh the nice white big huge chaves um and those are what 100 watts i i, I got i think i got the 360s you got 360s right jeff yeah yeah those are i think are 100 watts from America. those light up a room i mean they light up a room these are going to be used for a smaller area but if you want to give some light, let's say you want to light up above the a dance floor or light up around the dance floor, just one thing, don't hit people in the face with your lights. Not fun. Blinding people, it's not a good thing. <laughs> try and go overhead, try and do stuff. But I've used these, uh, I've used them before uh, with uh, Shavi Show Express. And uh, I got taught by a friend to do what's called a potato to have a, it looks like a potato on Sh a Chave Show Express. The lights are moving in, in such a way and they're going across the ceiling and crossing each other and doing stuff on the ceiling, which is great to do uh, to give a nice look without blinding people and still having that effect, kind of like a, a movie premiere kind of feel to it. And yeah, hey, uh, buddy, if you uh, click on that and if you scroll down to the uh, four stars and above, uh, there's some white U Kings that I bought yep. those. They're 90 bucks for, uh, for each one. They're about the same price, if not just a little bit less. Um, those are the ones I use the, uh, the cheap Chinese versions. Uh, they've worked for, I've had those for six years now and I not had one problem with them. So yeah, the U Kings, they're, they're, they're a decent, they're a decent light. I, I, you know, when they break, I'm just going to throw them out and buy yeah. another one. I mean, they're disposable, <laughs> but yeah. so far they have not broke, but yeah, I like mine in white. They just go well on a glow totem. And yeah, I, 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 I just pulled it up and I'm going to put that across. There you go. And I'm going to put that in the chat. They're 25 watts, if I remember correctly. Uh, these are uh, basically the same lights, except in white. And again, they're small, compact. They're equal to the uh, ADJ pocket goes. Um, they're not outrageously bright. They're not going to be light up a whole entire room. They're very small. They're very compact. I have two of them in a small tote with some DMX cable and I have my DMX, um, you know, so I have my uh, DMX uh, unit that plugs a USB into DMX for uh, Chave Show Express in that container. And I have a computer that uses Chave Show Express. So it's one of the things that these are the same ones, the other link I gave, that is the same as the first black one, step in white. So if you want to get a white pair, they're $90, $91 each. Yeah, and they're six dollars off with a with a coupon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you got another six dollars off of that. So like, that's a lot, what a four. You can find bucks. them. You can find them cheaper on eBay. I bought mine from eBay direct from uh, China, and uh, they were I want to say they were like seventy bucks each. So you know, if you take your chances, you know it is what it is. You know, Amazon, you can you can return stuff to Amazon. eBay is a little tougher. And that's that's one thing is convenience with with Amazon. So, if you want to pay a few dollars more? It's entirely up to you guys out there. Uh, so, Bradley, what about you? Um, you keep extra lights. Uh, you're nodding your head before. You keep extra lights in your van. Yeah, I do, just in case. Now, I, if my stuff gets broken in a gig, I'm out. But it happened. Uh, one of the bulbs of one of my uh, intimidators went out a couple weeks ago, and just because I was using them, I always bring, you know, at least two extra. So they're, they're in identical bags. Why not have them? I've always got extra up lights. Um, if one of my slim powers on my trees dies, so be it. I guess I've screwed for the rest of the night because I ain't going to be able to pull that out and redo it on the fly. But one quick head. Stop. But one quick head I can change out real easily. So, yeah, I do keep them. I always have a couple extra up lights with me. 
you know, even though they're the, my, you know, old cheap show, you know, like what are they, six Chauvet uh, Slim Par 64s. And I've got a couple of stage right trust warmers in my bag all the time. So if anything goes wrong, I can at least credibly put something together on the spot. That's the important thing. What about you, Dwayne? What do you do? Do you have an extra light or two with you? Oh, well, I pretty much got mine all in the bag. So I always bring extras. And then with my SUV, when I fold the, um, the middle row and the last row down, I always have that, that where you put your feet, those little crabbages, I can like stuff them and they won't be in the way. So that, that won't be an issue. Yeah. But usually all mine is in a big, huge bag, extra one. I think it's about a dozen. I, I, I try to keep a couple extra lights just in case, but I don't try and keep everything because I do have storage. Uh, and the reason why I don't try and keep everything in a van, just in case some idiot wants to break into my van, they're not stealing a bunch of stuff. So I always travel with what I need, plus some extra just in case, you know, backup, some backup stuff because things break. Computers have problems. Lights have problems. Speakers have problems. I've had it happen. Uh, many times and have had speakers in for repair. Um, it sucks, <laughs> especially they're out for a while. Uh, I just had my last year, the end of last year, I had my uh, J8s fall off a cart and knock out a board and knock out a subwoofer. So I had both my black J8s in service uh, in for service. And I, I used my white J8s uh, because that's, I didn't want like, should I spend money and buy another set? Do I really need another set of the same speaker? No, I don't. And there's not like a new generation that is came out. I can say, oh, well, I get a new generation and keep the old generation as backup. Um, and I still have, I still actually have, still have uh, JBL. I have my JR, uh, my PRX and I have my, uh, my PRX, uh, eight, uh, six, uh, no, eight fifteens. Uh, no, six fifteens. I have my PRX six fifteens and I have, uh, my, uh, uh, Eon six fifteens. So I still have those as well as backups for backup speakers. I mean, you want to full. So it, it's always fun. You should have backup, always carry backup stuff, you know, try to be prepared as much as possible. That's the best thing you can say. But um, like I said before, uh, Mike and everyone else, I will have links down below on YouTube. Make sure you click, follow, like, subscribe, everyone here. <laughs> Make sure you follow their journeys and watch your gig logs and stuff because – you know, especially if they go live or something, it's always good to jump in and hear what's happening. And also, want to let's thank you guys for watching and tuning in tonight. Uh, like everything else, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, everyone out there watching out there on Zoom, and if you're watching on Zoom, make sure you follow the channel. We'll be back here again next Tuesday night, eight o'clock Central Time here in the good old USA. And again, thank you everyone here. And this also thank to everyone who is asking questions in the chat. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you uh, watch us on Twitch. If you want to have live questions, if not, ask a question down below. I want to hear your questions, critiques, comments, criticisms, tomfoolery, or anything else you want to say down below. Hopefully this helps you guys out. There's a little bit of insight what we think and hopefully helps you out as a DJ. As always, move forward, guys, and thanks for tuning in. Have a good night. Oh, we don't have no one selling peace. Well, I'll do it because Hunter's not here tonight. Peace. <laughs>